Hello and welcome to another episode of I Am Very Passionate. My name's Mario. I'm Jessica. And today we have an intergalactic episode planned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. We're doing a Zodiac episode. It's going to be a really chill episode. A little, like... Shorter, I think, hopefully. I messed up our recording schedule, so <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I was just going with the flow. I don't want to be like that person, like, oh, oh well, my I God, can't. please be that person. I don't mind it at I'm all. I'm for the cause. I'm committed. So, um, I feel like we should say this. It Mario and I don't necessarily like fully believe in zodiac signs, but yeah. like it's very interesting. Yeah, it's something fun. It's just like used for like self reflection and. Like, I don't know. It's just... It's like tarot cards. Kind of, yeah. It helps, like, kind of guide. guide you. Yeah. Um, so, I'll be doing a brief history of Zodiac. It actually really has a cool history. And then I have, like, a pop quiz for celebrities for Mario. Oh. I did make you a cheat sheet. And though. I did our natal card. Na- our natal charts. So, we're going to share those with like you. Like, birth charts, right? Is that right. another word? Or are they a different thing? No, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. It's natal just natal sounds, sounds better. I can see it does. But it does make you think neonatal. It does. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing our NICU charts today, guys. <laughs> So I just have a couple quick icebreakers. <laughs> Could you imagine? I don't think I was a small baby. I was a normal size baby. I think I was normal. I think I was skinny. I think I was like Madeline. Okay, so the only Leo worth mentioning this week is Demi Lovato. She dropped her album Dancing with the Devil, The Art of Starting Over, and I love, 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 love. I've listened to it at least six times from beginning to end, but I do skip Madison's lullaby. Mm-hmm. I see you. It's so sad. It's really hard to listen to. It really is. I listened to it it's at work an and I broke down. Song. That, like I love that she has such a good relationship with her sister well, she and loves her. For that. Like her sister is the most important person in her life. Yeah, and that's really sweet. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I think I identify more with her older sister though. I know she had an older sister. She does. Yeah, Danny Danielle. Wow. So, like, when you get ready to watch the documentary, you're going to be introduced to her, and you're going to see, I feel like we are similar people. Oh, word. Me and her older sister, because, like, there's this... Does she look like her... Does she look like Demi? Um, It's weird, because she looks like Demi and Madison. Like, it's strange. It's uh, Danielle De La Garza. Oh, it's not Lovato? No. I think it's De La Garza. Or maybe it's Madison De La Garza. And it is Danielle um, Devado. Lovato. That's her. What's her name? Um, Dallas. Mm, Dallas Lovato. Sorry, that's what it was. The way that she says things, I'm like, oh, I wrote Phallus Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dallas. It's wild to me how her and her little sister are sisters, but her sister looks so Mexican. Or Latino compared uh, to Demi. Because they're half sisters. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. And it, the the guy that you'll see in the documentary is her stepdad, but Madison's dad, and he looks very Hispanic. And Demi's dad also looks very Hispanic. I can't explain it, but yeah, I like Dallas a lot. I feel like um, she and I have similar personalities. The way that she, there's a scene where she literally is sitting there, she's like, "I knew when my sister woke up, she would never, ever, ever meet up with those people again." And the producer goes, you know, she got high off of heroin like a week after to get back at that guy. And mm. she just sat there and she went like this. And I was like, yeah, I would have responded the same way. I don't know. She's just, I like her. I like her a lot. That's so sad. And she's very, she's heroin. Too. I'm not going to say anything else. You have to watch the documentary. Sis, the album is so good. I love it. It's very um, Fleetwood Mackey, soft poppy. Love it. It's so good. Yay. I've enjoyed what I've listened to. It's just, I have to <laughs> wait until I'm in a better place to listen to it. After I, I see you, it's less heavy. Okay, maybe I'll give that a chance. Yeah. So I did love Carefully. Carefully is great. I loved it. And I like my boyfriends are my girlfriends. They're great. That one was okay. I did listen to that one. I like I, That one had to grow on me, but I liked it a lot. Um, this is my favorite album of hers. Tell Me You Love Me is still a great album, but this is my favorite. Uh, the... One of the areas worth mentioning this week is Lil Nas X, the Nike lawsuit. Um, Do you want me to cover that? Yeah. Okay. So, so look, <laughs> Nike is trying to sue Mischief, the company that Lil Nas X collaborated with to make his Satan shoes, which are Air Maxes, Nike Air Maxes that have been customized it's to have pentagrams cool on shit. them. They're really cool. They have a drop of human blood in them. And um, I don't know if I believe it. They, they said they took blood from everybody on their team. To, to get enough blood what for it. What if that it. was just like a marketing ploy, though? I'm sure it has it. Like, I don't okay. I don't think they would lie about that. I mean, maybe. Maybe it's... 
But it's a single drop. I mean, how, who's going to be able to tell you can't test it? Yeah, I guess. It used to be red dye in the water. Yeah. But whatever. Um, so weird. But then the bottoms, <laughs> the bottoms of the soles are beautiful. Like, they're creepy as fuck, yeah. but they're beautiful. Because it's just like people writhing in hell. Yeah. Like, a, like an old school painting. Um, and Nike is suing them for libel, saying that this is, like, hurting their brand. Um, but also, they were able to get a, uh, what is, a, a temporary restraining, restraining yeah. order to stop them from selling the shoes. But it's kind of a moot point because they've already sold and shipped every single shoe except for one pair, which is being used for a giveaway. Um, but I don't think Nike is going to win this only because, so dumb. um, once you sell something, you don't have a say of what people do with that product. They can paint it. They can draw on it. They can cut it up. They can burn it. You have no say. And so they, Nike, Nike got their, their however many thousands of dollars for these 666 pairs of shoes. Um, and they have no, no say. Is that really how many they purchased? Yeah. They, they made only 666. That's amazing. And on the, on the side of the shoe, it says one out of 666, two out. So each oh, one's numbered. Oh, I did see that. That's so cool. Um, and so, so like they already made their money. What people, cause there's an aftermarket with shoes where you, people will customize your shoes for you yeah. for a price. Drip Creations is my favorite one for our Air Forces. And then you buy them and boom. So like there's, they're not going to be able to win this lawsuit because yes, it is Satan and people are associating with them, but at the same time it's art and it's transformative. So I don't think they're going to be able to win this. I really I hope, hope not. There's a lot of businesses that, that do this and mm-hmm. I think that's their income. They shouldn't be allowed to. But also what kind of precedent would that send? Exactly. Oh, those are cute. Yeah. What kind of precedent would that send if, a shoe company is like, oh, well, once you get our shoe, you are not allowed to do anything to it but wear it. You know? That's I bullshit. Don't think you they can't can do, do that. that. It's mine now. It's my property. Absolutely. And so... Look at the Astro World ones. Oh, those are really pretty. Yeah. She does great work. They're stunning. There's butterfly ones that I love that were out before, like, butterflies became a thing. My friend Katie has painted a couple pairs of vans. They're I'm really kind pretty. of interested in doing it myself. Okay, miss, I can't draw. Look at you go. I love it. I can paint a little bit, like a simple... Painting and drawing is the same thing. But I can look at it and do it. Like, I can't do it from memory. Well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's how you should start drawing. So loud. That's how you practice drawing. You you look at something and draw it. And you look at something and draw it. Yeah, I would paint. I would paint my own shoes. I don't know if I'd wear them. I don't understand that. So you will you will paint, see your but you won't draw. Um, I see your artwork. Versus, like, what I know I can do, I wouldn't consider myself to be, like, an incredible drawer or painter. It doesn't matter. Then you just practice and you get better. I guess. I mean, I don't want to argue about this again more. <laughs> but no, but it's just... draw. But I'm just saying painting is just drawing Painting with... is easier to me. Yeah, but it's still drawing. You're still drawing when you paint. Yes, but it's easier for me to do, like, shapes and shading. Mm-hmm. Drawing, like, line drawing is harder for me. Okay. But, I mean, painting is drawing. It's just a different medium, but it's still drawing. Okay. I hear you. I just... She doesn't hear me, guys. I do hear you. She has a wall. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) She has an art block. Listen, the song is still really good. I still love it so much. I love the... Which I song? work out to it. Like, I get on my bike. It's the first song I listen to. I get on my bike. Lil Nas X. Oh, 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 Montero. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Any, I can't work out listening to anyone. I don't know. I would be crying on the floor. <laughs> Trying to lose that water oh, weight. Oh, my God, I <laughs> <laughs> Just keep pushing. No, I listen to Montero on the bike. Like, it's, it's a, a great song. song. I've listened to it on repeat on stuff. And I know there's a lot of hate for it. Um, I don't understand the hate for it. I think you're a bunch of close-minded fucking assholes if you're hating on it. But I do, I will say I am seeing a lot of praise for it as well. And moms coming out, Facebook, TikTok. The gay community is loving it. No, but I mean outside of the gay community. Mm -hmm. Just like regular, degular moms with their kids are like, this song is going to turn my kid gay. Like they're not going to be a Satanist. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I love that. I love that people are being more outspoken about it too. What? Regular, degular. I like that phrase. What is that? I don't know. I heard it somewhere and I was like, oh, bitch, regular degular. Like, this is <laughs> regular old me. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's like strictly dickly. Yeah. I love where I <laughs> love shit like that when you rhyme for no reason. It kills me. I get off on it. I'm like, yeah. I just threw up a little bit in my mouth, guys. <sighs> I'm joking. He's not into the right deg. <laughs> Our sense of humor is so stupid. It's so dumb. I hate you. You started it. Let me be me. Ragdag. The ragdag. Ragdag redemption. Have you still been playing that game or no? No, I stopped. It's a little too slow for me. I don't I need, like, the like setting. the Mario. And I like the setting. It's just real slow. Did you guys... Um, I have to ride, like, you know, 30 minutes to get to the next thing. That's a lot. Has your son played any other Zelda games other than Breath of the Wild? 
So there's a new Zelda game coming out. He has it. No, no, he has the one that came out at Christmas, whatever that was. Does he like that one? I The thing with autism I've noticed is that, like... That one's not really a Zelda game, though. It just no, has a Zelda I, skin. No, I know. But I think the thing is, is um, especially with the phases that he goes through, like, he has to get to the next phase on his own. Like, I can't introduce it. So, for example, when he was obsessed with Lego Batman, I was like, great, I need him to be a little bit more mature. I hope he gets, like, into Batman. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, like, did, but then he jumped straight over to Marvel, and then Marvel became, like, so he has to do do it on his own. Like, I could buy him all the Zelda games. I don't know that it's going to take him out of Breath of the Wild. I'm just, because Breath of the Wild is the only Zelda game like that. And so I'm wondering if he plays another Zelda game, if he's going to hate it. Because it's very different. I don't know. Because, like, a normal Zelda game is you go to a dungeon, and there's puzzles and monsters you kill, and you have to figure it out and figure out your way through the puzzle, the dungeon. Mm-hmm. Whereas I, I, mean, I don't know. Whereas Breath of the Wild is you just explore everything. I'll ask him. I'll ask him if he's heard of the Because Skyward Sword like, is coming out. For example, we my family got a VR. Mario played on it this morning before it was we amazing. Out <laughs> he liked it. It's a lot of fun. I really like it. The, uh, it's an Oculus Quest, too. Danny, no, Madeline Jr. and I have really been exploring the vr like we've been doing the youtube videos we've been doing like nature we've been doing games all kinds of stuff danny has literally only stuck to the tutorial i mean it's fun though no it's totally fun but he will only do the tutorial and he keeps telling me i'm gonna do the ocean next i'm like okay if you say so son yeah if you say so (laughs) but so it's just i don't know like he has to get there on his own i have found that like i can't guide his his obsessions you know what i mean no, I'm not saying. I'm just wondering if he's gonna like the actual format of Zelda versus what it was. Also, did you see those Joy Cons? They're Zelda themed. Oh, I did see those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, didn't show, we didn't show them to Danny because you don't want. They're expensive. Yeah, it's like a hundred dollars. He asked for um, our trip. He wants a Zelda suitcase and backpack. Aww. I found a unicorn one for Matt. Have you seen the Zelda backpack that is the shield with the sword coming through it? No, or no, it's just the Hylian shield. It's a huge shield no. that's like. The shape of Link Shield. Mm-mm. It's a cool backpack. There was there's a one at GameStop that he wants, but I, it's not the shield. Um, the last Aries I want to talk about is Kristen Stewart. She is now um, they're in production to produce the Princess Di biopic. It's going to be called Spencer, and she's playing Princess Di. And I looked at pictures of it, and she looks exactly like her. Whatever. Speaking of how long <laughs> we need to make these these, fucking we need to make these are, faster. That's the end of my icebreakers. Let's move on to a history of astrology. Woo. All right, Bose. I'm ready when you saw. Oh, I've been recording for 46 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just snotted all over myself. That's disgusting, guys. She's covered. No, I'm joking. <laughs> He's such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have to defend myself so hard because what was it you were talking about last week? I was like, oh, Joe Rogan. You're like, oh, she loves Joe Rogan. And I have to be like, no, 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 no. This isn't a teardrops tattoo. We're not getting into that again. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I mean, I, I'm i not the one who got the, t- the tattoo of a single teardrop on a guitar. You're the I one who did that. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> Don't protect your titties. <laughs> I just watched, I finished uh, Hill House yesterday with my friends. Mm-hmm. And there was a scene where the two sisters got in a fight, mm-hmm. and one punched the other in the boob. Mm-hmm. She's like, did you just punch me in the boob? Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, I did. Because <laughs> <laughs> at first she's like, oh my god, I just punched her in the boob. She's like, yeah, I punched her in the boob. I've never had anyone punch me in the boob before. I will say, I was kind of disappointed in Hill House. I, mm, I love Bly Minor so much better. Um, Hill House, people say Hill House is I so I didn't scary. like Bly Minor. I never but you don't like it. love. And that's the whole that's theme. Mean. It's that's, true. I do like love. You're not a romantic person. I'm not a romantic person, but I like love. Romance well, yes. and love are not the same thing. I guess you're right. They're you're right. Not. But she does like romance, and it is all. Well, it's unless a, it's a period piece. It's a period piece. It's no, from the 80s. that's not a period piece. Yes, I'm it talking is. about like 18th century I hate period pieces. That's a period piece. I hate 80s. That. 80s was what 30 decades ago. That's not 30 a period. decades ago, honey. Was it 30 decades? Yeah, that's 3,000 years. Oh, 30 years ago. <laughs> or 300 years. Three decades, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tired. I'm hungry. I don't want to be here. We oh, recorded sorry. our shit and it fucked up, so I had to record our shit again. It. I know we weren't supposed to mention it, but I am. I'm pissed about it. All right, now welcome back. We're going to start talking about... <laughs> 
<laughs> Sit down. School's in session, bitches. About astrology, the history of astrology, <laughs> and then we're going to go over our needle charts. What if teachers talk like that? Sit down, assholes. It's time for class to start. <laughs> On TikTok, they do. <laughs> I can't. I love teacher TikToks. I like teacher, well, I like some teacher TikToks. There's some where they're like listening to the kids talk shit Ooh. to each other, and she's like, <gasps> Listen, <gasps> one of my nephew's teachers is on TikTok, and the whole school found it. And I don't know what's wrong with this bitch. She's she unhappy. In trouble? I don't know if she's in trouble, but she talks about like an affair that she had and how she's miserable teaching. And like she does TikToks on her, like, um, what's it called? Your, her planning time and how like she has to work a second job. I don't, and like I watch her, I'm like, baby, just quit. You don't, you don't have to be a teacher. Yeah. Nobody, you don't want to be there. The students don't, don't want you there. I feel like America has it like ingrained in us that like this once you choose a career that's your career yeah i feel bad and so i saw it and i feel really bad for her like as a person but at the same time it's incredibly unprofessional to tiktok in your classroom with such negative thoughts about yeah a lot of the teachers who tiktok are very much oh this this funny thing that happened with this kid or yeah they're great teaching moments in a different setting but she's like at the school complaining about being at the school do you watch the preschool teacher guy no the gay guy with the glasses i don't watch preschool anything that was never my he just pops up because he's gay no no and he does pre-k pause Mm -hmm. he's really great he has really funny stories i never was i never thought that i would teach anything below high school oh i was same but (laughs) shut up (laughs) all right astrology too many tangents. The problem is, is Mario and I don't get to hang out a lot anymore, so I feel like we get together and we just talk. Yeah. But so we nice. have a fucking schedule. I'm just kidding. I love you. Okay. Astrology. I don't Not know bad. what accent that was. Thank you, Lawrence Cheney. I wish I had a, a light projector that put, like, the stars everywhere. To oh, my do God. This. Like, yeah. And we had the lie on oh, the do floor. You wanna, do you want to put on the uh, virtual... <laughs> too much now okay sorry all right guys I'm sorry. i need to focus I'm I'm be like, oh look at that constellation <laughs> i didn't realize uranus was in your bedroom <laughs> <laughs> it's always here when i'm in here <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> <laughs> why can we smoke pot and got on the podcast like why can't we focus uh, mario I- focus i have bags your unfocusing is helping me unfocus. Do you see my bags? No. I don't get, like, typical bags. I get bags, like, along my eyelid. I swear I don't see them. Your eyes look normal to me. They're, no, they're there. I also have, like, no depth perception, so I don't oh, know shit, that I'm the button. person to ask. You just blinded me. I didn't mean I'm to. I hit seizure. the wrong button. A seizure. <laughs> I don't see them, but, I mean, I have no depth perception. Oh, no, they're there. Okay, if you look, mm-hmm. look along my waterline. Mm-hmm. You see that small line? Mmm, okay. Those are my bags. Like, I get this little You don't have bags, line. you have clutches. Is that what they're called? I, that's what I would call them. Bags are like that. Well, this is a bag. Like, this is what I get when I get bags. Yeah, I don't know that I would call that a bag. I've seen, like, real bags. I don't get, you get this you, bag. You have a handbag. You don't have a bag. It's it's that one obnoxiously small bag that the girl brings to the... Like, you can't even fit a fucking lipstick in. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh. The <laughs> tiny Tiny first TikTok is my favorite. Have you That's ever a seen TikTok? It? Oh my god, Lizzo's is so funny because she brings out a bag like this big, and then she her friends are like, "Hey man, do you have a snack?" And then she like <laughs> she pulls out like a whopper. <laughs> she's so funny. Oh, that sounds they're really like, good. They're like Lizzo. I need a pencil, and she's like, <laughs> I need a, I need to go patient. I've only seen a handful of her TikToks. Lizzo I follow TikTok her. TikTok is my favorite. I follow her and Lil Nas X on TikTok. Oh, I follow. I started but, following him. I'm terrible at TikTok because I, instead of going to my follow, because you know how the follow them the for you, mm-hmm. I only stay on for you. I only stay on follow. Um, TikTok can get messy for me. I guess so. I get, I see shit on there and I'm just like, I, anything about like Christian, anything. And I'm like back to what I've clicked on. Oh no, there's that one witch girl, the, that witch talk girl who talks shit about Christianity. I probably have seen her. I follow a lot of witches, tarot card readers, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of tarot, did you know that nobody knows when astrology first started? I that did not. Like the worst. No, I mean, it's like, it's not a Mario level. We, we don't have a pencil silent today. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But, like, the level of unprofessionalism. Wait, hold on. I could not believe. Pause. Pre K pause. Um, okay, Sheena's just telling me to check my emails. How is she? She, sorry, I talked to her a little bit after. Do you feel better? Yeah, I feel better. I just I had to, like, let it out in that moment. I was Where? really upset. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So the first lunar calendar uh, was found like etched into bone. It dates back to 32,000 BCE. Mm. But there are also um, cave paintings at, I don't know how to say this, Lesca, Lesca, I think it's Lesca, that date to 17,000 BCE, which... Is that the ones in Ireland? Or yes, mm-hmm. and the a lot of anthropologists and sociologists say that the etchings are probably the earliest constellations, but they have no way to really prove it. So the most famous ancient monument aligned to the heavens is Stonehenge, mm-hmm. because that's what they used to build to track the movements of the sun and the moon. I didn't know that. Did well, you? Know I that? don't know if that's true. This is uh this is like a scientific source well, no, that the, I pulled it from. Because the pyramids are also lined up with the stars. Are the pyramids, is Stonehenge older than the pyramids? Um, I don't have anything about the pyramids in here, but we can look it up. Because the pyramids are lined up with the stars. No, but that may have been because of their religion, whereas like this was probably like a timepiece, I think is what they're trying to say. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, because yeah. no, it is, it's a calendar. Stonehenge is a calendar. Right. That's Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't think the pyramids were intended to be a calendar. No, no, no. They were just aligned with the stars. Right. So that's that's what they're saying. But also, like, it's really hard to prove because we can only assume. Like, we don't know. Just like dinosaurs. Like, every time I see a depiction of a dinosaur, I always go, is that really what you look like? They're supposed to have feathers. Yeah. Some of them are supposed to have feathers. Yeah. But feathers and reptile scales are made from the same, like, protein in the body. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. So, do you really want me to look up what's No, it's fine. Okay. Um, there's, are older. There is a mesothelic calendar dated back to 8,000 BCE, which was found really recently in Scotland, but the, it, but it predates Stonehenge by 5,000 years. So there's a lot of proof that like Scotland and stuff, like that area was really into astrology. So. Have, you, have you been getting those TikToks about Abuzabelka or whatever the fuck it is? What? It's like Abuzabelka or something. I don't and think it's I've like, seen it. It's like this ancient thing that's still buried, but like part of it's been uncovered and it's like what oldest thing we've ever found. Shut up. Yeah. How and did you spell it? It's like you, like, I keep seeing TikToks Uzabelka? about it. Abuzabelka? Abuzabelka or Abusabelka? something. Abuzabelka? Sorry, guys, TikTok break. Like um, anyway, sorry. So, no, it's fine. Astrology, as we know it, like our birth charts, our horoscopes, um, they also have hazy origins, but people, like, lump the two, like, stargazing, constellations, all that together. Mm-hmm. So the earliest astronomical writings came from Babylonia in 1800 BCE. But there also have been some found dated back to the Akkadian era, which I don't know what that is. 2300 BC. Arca- Arcadian? A- Akkadian. A-K-K-A-D-I-A-N. Uh, I don't know her. Yeah, I don't know her either. So Mesopotamians and Babylonians were probably the earliest ones that did this type of... I get, they, so in this article, it's worded as a religion, mm-hmm. which is wild because we know Mesopotamia and Babylon as a Christian right. birthplace, right? But they made, so Babylonians and Mesopotamians actually made lists of different celestial events that they observed. And so they were studying like skies and developing these systems before it was all written down. It's hard, I guess it's hard for everyone to prove that, but a lot of the different, um, like the last day of winter solstice and all of that, like is attributed to their calendar and what they observed. Oh. So all of that. And that's so funny to me because like we know now that like Christmas isn't actually Jesus's birthday, right? Yeah. No, it all was, of those holidays were just moved around to match up pagan holidays. To make it easier to integrate a new religion and an old religion. Mm-hmm. So I just thought yeah. that was pretty cool. I didn't realize how big Easter was with white people though. Oh, we, yeah. Because like we were talking about it at lunch. East, um, I think white people take Easter, like Easter bunny eggs, Easter basket. Like they take that part of it seriously. Whereas like, I know a lot of Hispanics that actually take it seriously. Like religiously? Yeah. My father-in-law goes and gets the cross every Ash Wednesday. Oh, every, word. Every time. No, cause like I was talking to my work mom and she's like, does your mom still have your basket from when you were a kid? And I was like, we haven't done Easter since I was nine. And she's like, what? And I was like, yeah, when I was nine... I was like, oh my gosh, guys, tomorrow's Easter. We forgot to put our baskets down. And my dad goes, you still believe in that? Oh, and she God. was scandalized. Such a bitch-ass move, too. Oh, that's my dad. No, um, that's not okay. No, I'm just saying that's him. That's his M.O. No, um, mean, but still. But, but no, like, and apparently Chris's mom still sends him an Easter basket every year. That's so weird. And I was like, that's, I guess, I, I don't know if that's a white mom thing. Or, maybe, maybe. I, just, I think Easter is probably, like, the one holiday that you... Don't like, give, the only thing I like about Easter is the fucking jelly beans. Oh, no, no, no. I'm all about oh, the, the peanut butter eggs. eggs. The ones with the cream in them? Yeah. Oh, no, I hate those. I love them. It's just like... I can only have one. Getting Taking a load in your mouth. 
every time. I love that. <laughs> no, I do like that. Just my I don't like. I don't like the candy. Hit flavor. the back of my throat, sir. I want a gag. No. And then it tastes sweet. Yeah, I'm into it. But no, I I like the, the solid Cadbury eggs. They're okay. I like them. I don't like chocolate. I've learned this about myself. I'm not into chocolate plain. But is it American chocolate that you're not into chocolate plain? No, you talking like European chocolate? Yes, I have to have some sort of texture. It either uh, needs to like be softer or crunchy. There has to be something in it, like soft and milky, or it has to be like crunchy. Like my favorite is the Cadbury uh, raisin and nut chocolate bar. Have you ever had that? No, but I love raisins. Oh, this and is, nuts. I think it's peanuts. This is a bomb ass bar. Where do you get that? What are you doing? I'm looking. Okay. That thing that I was telling you about. ADHD today. Well, no, no, no. This is it, guys. This no, no, is no, no, what no. It's, no, no, no. But this is what it's like to have ADD. Mario is listening to me but scrolling on his phone, and I'm distracted by his phone because I can see it in his glasses. This is mindless. And I'm like, is this boring? Do you not, are you not interested? Go back. If you don't know what Gobekli Tepe is, go back. please watch this video. Go back. Go back. Go back. is one of the greatest mysteries in all of human history. It's one of the largest megalithic structures on Earth, and it is by far the oldest. As a matter of fact, it predates both the pyramids and Stonehenge by about 6,000 years. What makes this site unique is that when it was discovered in the 1990s, geologists found that whoever created this structure actually buried it on purpose after its construction. Meaning this thing is basically a time capsule from 11,000 years ago. Scientists have theorized that Gobekli Tepe could hold the answers to many of the most pressing unanswered questions about the history of the human race. For instance, with depictions like these, many ancient religions depict similar and seemingly significant objects. Many of these objects are seen and described on the pillars of Gobekli Tepe. The reason why this is all a mystery is because they have only excavated 5% of the entire structure. If you guys want to donate a little bit of money to a good cause, yeah. there's a link in my bio towards an guys, excavation fund for Gobekli Tepe. What guys, if, if you don't know what Gobekli what Tepe is, Atlantis? please watch this video. Gobekli like, what if we have the, the history of Atlantis wrong and human. that's Atlantis? That'd be cool. Like, and, oh my god. Gobekli yeah. Tepe. No, I, I saw it, because, like, sometimes I get, like, the, like... Not conspiracy theory, but like aliens and like oh, I know. ancient aliens sort We're of thing. Super into June, June 6th. Oh, June 25th. June 25th. I'm not into it, but I'll I'm, be I'm in excited. Mexico, so I'm excited let me to know when I get back. Well, I mean, if maybe you'll be safe and then America will go to shit. I'll be on a tiny island. Okay. I'll just stay there. Right. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. But anyway, go back. Go back, Lee Techie. I don't know why I thought it was Uzbekli Techie, but go it back, Lee Techie. Similar. I get it. Um, anyway, I'm so sorry. I no, just, it's I, okay. Is this boring? Do you want me to skip this? No, no, no. I'm listening. I was, I've been listening to the whole time. I was just like, I need to find it. Because it's one of those things where like I can't focus on anything until I find this thing because I want you to know about it. Like when we were doing the design for the thing and I like I couldn't focus yes. on the podcast. Yeah, that's... I actually thought about it the other day. You did? Yeah. Why? Not in a bad way. She's like, oh, I really liked having a creative conversation like that. It was no, cool. it's fun to have it. It's just like if we're going to do creative, that's all we can do. I can't do anything else. Yeah. I've or just afterwards. <laughs> No, my brain is too fried after we do this. I'm always like, I don't want to talk for three days. Oh my God, really? Yeah. And she talks to me the next day. That's a good friend. I Skype you. I don't use my voice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear my words. You read them. I hear your voice though when I read them. Okay. Okay. okay so horoscopic astrology. Um, where am I? So the earliest horoscopes didn't actually use the zodiac that we know. So that circle divided into 12 portions. Which is also wrong. So it was the 13th one. Yes. Are you going to bring that up? No. Oh, Sisyphus. Oh, Sisyphus. You can bring it up. If I you don't want. want to. Okay. I will. Keep going. I just burped. Sorry. Cochina. What does that mean? Disgusting. Oh. Do you, you don't know that word? That's not a... That's a Mexican spelling That's name, not I guess. a... Yeah, it's not it's a It's like nasty word. or dirty. I don't know what we use like that. I have to think about it. Gross. In Spanish. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. This is the ADD <laughs> astrology episode. ADD astrology. That's the name of the no episode. No one is going to that listen to That is the episode it. name. Can you put it in the work, the word doc so we remember it? Yeah. ADD astrology. It even sounds like a song. Okay. It's like ADD SUV by Uffy. ADD. Astrology. <laughs> this is worse than our drag, the drag queen fever dream. That was a great episode. It was a great episode. Sometimes I go back and just listen to it. I don't even know where I was now. <laughs> okay, so the originally, it. it was not the 12 circles. Right. The 12 so times. they were actually only based on how near planets were to particular stars. And the interpretations focused on kings and empires and were mostly concerned with the fate of omens. And so 
like we use it differently now. So it was mostly just used for kings and their queens and kings and their queens to help them make like political kings, decisions, war decisions, um, whether or not it was the right time to take over another country, stuff like that. Wasn't um, what is his name? Napoleon Alexander the Great. Mm. Wasn't he like really into astrology? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you bringing that up? He's actually the next. Well, oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god, I did not read the doc. I promise. <laughs> ADD and psychic astrology. <laughs> I'm clear cognizant. Clear cognizant, yeah. That's what I just know. Yeah. I heard clairvoyant, but when it didn't finish as voyant, I was like, what? I'm telling you, I'm so tired today. <laughs> so, same. I only got three hours of sleep. I didn't sleep all period. Not, yeah, three and a half. Horoscopic astrology really got going after Alexander the Great conquered Mesopotamia. So he kind of went in and took over. And the place was overrun by the Greeks by 331 BCE. And many Greek texts claim Egypt as the birthplace of the horoscope. But Egypt also was also influenced by Babylonian astronomy. And it reached them via, like, the marooting Greeks. So it already existed in Mesopotamia. But as Alexander the Great came down and, like, conquered that whole thing from, like, Mesopotamia over into Egypt and all of that, like, the different religions and countries were taken over, obviously, by the new religion of the new leader that comes in. Because that was pretty common. Like, mm-hmm. a new leader would come in. You would have to follow the religious. I mean, they did that even in England. Like, yeah. oh, now we're Catholic, guys. Because and if you're not, war, you die. Every war was fueled by religion, religion up until, like, we started getting too smart for our own good. And so, now it's about now power. It's, it's about power. Which I guess... Same thing. I view religion as power. Control. Yeah. yeah. So astrology obviously has changed over the centuries. Uh, there's been several different cultures that have touched it. So it's all changed now. And what we kind of do now is actually not the right way to do it. So I kind of believe even less in astrology now. Having researched it? Having like known like its origins and what it was used for and how like it wasn't 12 equal charts. It was more about constellations next to planets. Where, so I'm just, I'm very interested to read my birth chart now, or have you read my birth chart? So the Egyptian influence on astrology included the use of deacons, houses, sign rulers, aspects, and mathematicals that they called the part of fortune. I don't have a lot of information about that. And so the Babylonian influence included the importance of eclipses, planetary exaltations, and the arrangement of signs and triplicities. So everything kind of melted together as it does when you have a new leader coming over with old and new religion. Like, I don't, I feel like people should know this. If you don't know this, like paganism and Christianity, like winter solstice, they made Jesus's birthday Mm -hmm. because it was like, well, we have to do something. So let's like put Jesus's birthday there. It'll make it easier for the pagans to like adapt to the new religion. Mm -hmm. But like he was born what in the spring. Yeah. And he was more of an apple bottom guy anyway. Okay. Do you get that joke? Yes. And it made my booty hole close a little bit. What? <laughs> There's a little bit of the Catholic guilt inside of me that's like, oh no! <laughs> <That's so crazy. laughs> it comes out every now and then. When I'm caught off guard by people making fun, I'm like, shit. Oh. Catholics are gonna be mad. They can lick my head. I'm joking. No, they do. Catholics. So, yeah. It's in their name. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Not, not like I think it was Fergie. Oh, Fergie. I'm such a visual and I'm so upset about it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> no, I'm just picturing like Fergie singing about New Religion jeans. Oh my god. And then apple bottom jeans with the boots with the fur coming on and they're just like going back and forth in the club dancing. Just like in full Catholic garb though. Like I see priests just the nuns. doing it. Like just popping it and locking it. That's yeah. Oh, I love it. I always... So do you remember, like, as a kid growing up, seeing, like, that joke of, like, nuns on a bus going to Vegas or whatever? Like, uh-huh. I feel like that happened in a lot of movies. Yeah, it was shows. in Simpsons, too, and Family Guy, and... Um, a Goofy movie. Like, they're going to prophesize or whatever. Or yeah, whatever. I just, I really want to see a nun in a casino. Like, I feel like my life would be complete. Like, it'd be really cool. Have you never seen Sister Act? That, no, but, like, in real life. Like, I want to go to oh, Vegas oh, okay. and look over and be like, what up, sister? Like... Because like they literally is a scene where they run through and no, I know, scene. but like I want to see. Is that one of them playing? Or yeah, does that one of them playing. Sister Mary um, Lazarus. La- Lazarus, I love yeah. Lazarus. Oh, she's my favorite. I love that she's the oldest one and she's named. But after my favorite, Lazarus. my favorite part of that is like they pan on the nun playing and getting excited, and then Mother Superior is like, "Please come with me." And she gets in line, and there's three other nuns who are doing the same thing, and they were all in trouble. That was my favorite part. I love that movie so much. It's on, it. it's on Disney Plus. Both of them are. I'm excited. A oh, happy day. Why? What am I doing? 
Um, so the last thing you mentioned. Okay, so then the but so we talked about all the different and how we're doing it wrong. astrology, right? And then the Persian and Arabic traditions like reintroduce more a scientific approach. So now you have Islamic astrologers that you like not now, but like in now the history that I'm talking uh-huh. about. Islamic astrologers use tables of planetary positions and exact calculations, which put our astrology on a firmer like <laughs> mathematic footing. So this actually helped to revive astrology in the medieval time period. So we went all the way from BCE. Oh, now we're in the medieval period. So when you're saying we're doing it wrong, you mean at that time we're doing it wrong? No, no or I mean now? Like now we're doing it wrong. Oh, okay, okay. I'll get to that though. Uh, let's see. So this helped revive astrology during in medieval Europe during the 13th century, and it actually became part of medicine. Like medical practices would include astrology. I've seen some memes about that. Really? Where it's like talking about like being a doctor back in the day and it's like okay mars is in venus or or is in is in aries today so that means you should let some blood and every time they would say something is let some blood yeah (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. let some blood they would they would do that all the time for like headaches and stuff and it's like okay well jupiter is in is in whatever and so because of that we should let some blood and so this time during medieval times, astrologers, this is when they first started drawing up like individual personal horoscope charts and people would use that. So it was no longer like this royal thing and have to do with conquerors and kings like the average person could do it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's being practiced in medicine. But I think that's cool that like the earliest form of what we do in astrology happened in medieval times. That's cool. Yeah. So during the Renaissance, um, I'm almost done. During the Renaissance, astrology and astronomy were practiced as one complete system. But it makes sense because, like, we had the heliocentric and the geocentric. Geocentric. Thank you. So astronomers like Galileo, uh, Tycho Brahe, not a lot of people. Tycho know Brahe. Those. Yeah, and Johannes Kepler fed their astronomical knowledge and in discoveries into astrology, but it ultimately led to the demise of astrology because the two disciplines obviously had to split apart at that Mm -hmm. point because you're getting more intelligence. You can scientifically and objectively look at things. So like old religious practices and science will never mesh up. Absolutely. This this is when the split became. So the scientific developments of the enlightenment period in the 18th century overtook astrology and consigned it to the loony bin of history. Their words, not mine. Robert Hand calls this period the endarkenment in relation to astrology because it almost died as a discipline. But we revived it in the 19th century, and there was also a serious dumbing down of the basics, and it became less technical and scientific. So now a lot of people use astrology as meaningless kind of like fortune telling or um, like an artistic endeavor. Um, Sorry, (laughs) bubbles. So it also continues under the guise of sun sign columns in the newspapers and online. So that's kind of the history of astrology. So mm-hmm. we brought it back, but like we did, we're not taking it with the full scientific approach that they did back in Galileo's time. Mm-hmm. But it's very interesting because I think about the girl that does like the actual star charts of like the planet or the United States when there was an election coming up or Joe Biden. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why she does it that way because it is a little bit more like it does involve the planets at that point and where they align. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, our whenever somebody says, "Oh, this is the this is the horoscope for Aries," it's bullshit. It's just somebody made something up. Yeah. But is that the same as like looking at your natal chart or whatever? No, that's not the same. Uh, okay, so this is just like what's in the newspaper. I feel like neonatal chart makes more sense, but like when people neonatal. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we both said fucking it. Tired. I said it. I said it first. Okay, so your natal chart is probably More the money. most accurate it's going to be because you are taking into consideration the stars and the alignment and like where but you were born. Also, like, isn't that more about life than daily occurrences? Yes, but there are people that can do that on a daily occurrence. Mm-hmm. Like the girl I told you about that was like literally the next country she's going to live in is based on her chart and where the world is at that time. So there's a whole like scientific approach to it mm-hmm. that I think looks so overwhelming to me. Yeah. But I mean, it is a thing. So you ready? Can you name all the astrology? All the signs? The astrological signs? Yeah. Okay. So we have. Start with January. That's Capricorn, Aquarius. Is it Capricorn or Sagittarius? It's one of the two. I was... It's Aquarius. Mm-mm. My grandmother's an Aquarius. Yeah, but like Aquarius starts halfway or towards the end of January. Mm. The first one is Sagittarius or Capricorn. 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 My grandmother's a Capricorn. Sorry. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Leo. Um, 
can't forget After this Scorpio? No. No, Leo, and then Thank Virgo. Oh, no, Gemini. Yep. Virgo, Leo, um, and Sagittarius? I'm missing one. No, you got them all. Did I? Yeah. Oh, did you miss Taurus? No, I said Taurus. Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces. Yeah, I said all. Yeah, well, and then a fish, a fish, a fish. Well, we're not talking about. But we don't add her. Yeah. She's the thirteenth one. They're like, oh, they're there. <laughs> how yeah. do you, um, how do you feel knowing two Gemini's? I don't know. Like they're two of my best friends, so I don't have issue. No, but like Tim and I feel are very different. I don't think you are really like. Your approach to life is different, but your approach to handling me is the same. My approach to life is different probably because of my age. Maybe so. And I will say Tim has changed a lot since I met him. Tim has, is a different, I think Tim, I don't think Tim has changed. I think Tim is being more authentically himself now. And less of like that hard shell. Yeah. Like he's showing us his actual self versus the, well, the I appreciate front. that more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, Cause he used to have a front, like it's a very Gemini thing to have this front of like this is how I come off, um, but actually yeah, then you get but, to know me. But when I I come off differently than Tim, I think to most people. Well, I feel like when people first meet you, they feel one way, but then once they get to know you, they feel different. I have that problem all the time. That's a Gemini thing because yeah. you you put on this this not this face, but this projection of how you want people to perceive you. Yeah, probably. But when, and that actually is covered in your natal. Okay, sh- didn't talk about it. I'm so excited. Okay, sorry. Um, Let's go over the characteristics really quick, and we'll do a guessing game, and then you can read me. Okay. Okay, you can read me. Do you want me to read me first or read you first? It doesn't matter to me. I don't okay. care. Um, so first we have Aries. They are the ram. Their ruler planet is Mars and their element is fire. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So the Aries zodiac t- sign is the first sign of the zodiac. The it Aries is. people, Aries. The Aries people are willful, feisty, self-centered, courageous, bold, foolhardy, independent, and straightforward. Um... Their negative traits, they can be cold-hearted, reckless, and their compatible signs are Leo and Sagittarius. Next, I have Taurus. They're the bull, and their element is earth. The Taurus is the second sign of the zodiac. Taurus people are practical, creative, loyal, possessive, temperamental, sensually indulgent, down-to-earth, dependable, persistent, and practical. They're super stubborn. Very stubborn. Their negative traits are they are really jealous and flexible and resentful people. Yeah. When is the... I know a Taurus, and I would say that that describes her to a T. Gemini. Whoop, whoop. So... Gemini's next? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I'm sorry. My, I, my element is air. I'm a Gemini. Mm-hmm. There, it's the twins. That's our symbol. The This is the third sign of the Zodiac. Gemini people are curious, elusive, unpredictable, changeable, versatile, childlike, romantic... Playful, friendly, talkative, and have a keen intellect. I like the intellect part. <laughs> My negative traits are they are known to have two personalities and can turn out to be confusing and intriguing at the same time. I, I would agree with that about me. Cancers next. I actually really like cancers. They're like the most hated zodiac. I side. like cancers. We get along. Other well. than so, other than Scorpio. But it says compatible are Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. My what? husband is a Libra for Gemini. So, mm-hmm. um, it's cancer. I do like cancers a lot. Well, you have a lot more compatible than I do. I had two sons. Well, I, I have two. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. The cancer people are cautious, protective, nurturing, secretive, instinctive, needy, sensitive, funny, empathetic, and deeply complex people. I know cancer genius. <laughs> you can, you can say it a little louder for the people she at It's somebody that I don't like. I know a cancer though, and she is like that. Oh. Um, they are moody and too needy people. They have a lot of mood swings and their characteristics are based on emotions. If you're an actualized cancer, I get along with you, but I know someone who is not and it is impossible to be friends with them. Uh, okay. Next is Leo. It's the fire sign or the lion, but it is a fire element. They are distinctive, provocative, demanding, goal oriented, flamboyant, self-made, warm, outgoing, sincere, loyal people. And my best friend is a Leo, so that's Sheena. Their negative traits, they are bossy, conceited, intolerant, and have false pride. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because her compatible signs are not me, but to, it says to some extent Libra, and that's my husband, and they were friends before she and I were friends. Oh, word. But she liked me more. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know you like us both. <laughs> so, like, do you get along with your own sign? I don't know many Geminis. No, no, but I'm saying do you, like... 
do like whatever your sign is, do you get along with people with the same sign as you? I don't know many Geminis. Not you personally. Oh, like, like in, in general, general? I think it depends on the sign. Oh, okay. I think it would be hard for Geminis to get along. Because, like, Chris is an Aries, I'm an Aries. And you guys get along? Yeah, very well. Okay, here's your cheat sheet. So, let's see. Virgo, they're discriminating, obsessive, realistic, analytical, reliable, self-contained, knowledgeable, and predictable. I actually like Virgos, too. Their negative traits are they are introverts and judgment to people who do not forgive easily. Why do I like all the hard people? That's got to be trauma. <laughs> It's got to be like wanting to fix people. Um, Libra, this is my husband. His ruler planet is Venus. Oh, that's interesting. Um, his element is air. The Libra zodiac sign is the seventh. The Libra is the only zodiac sign that has an inanimate object. The scales as a symbol. Librans are harmonious, civilized, intellectual, sophisticated, seducive, seductive, elegant, creative, witty, balanced, sociable people who maintain their status quo. Absolutely. That's Daniel. My mom's a Libra. It says that they're true romantics at heart and they're flirts. I don't know that Daniel's romantic. Maybe in his own way, but he is a flirt. Yeah. What um, What are their compatible signs? Gemini and Aquarius. Oh, okay. That's funny. My sister's an Aquarius. So my mom and her don't get along. <laughs> That's funny because my mom is an Aquarius and I don't know that like they have like, clo- a, like a super close relationship. Uh, Scorpio is next. They are traditionally ruled by Mars, but recently Pluto was assigned as their ruler planet. Oh. So I don't know what's going on there, guys. You, you gotta decide. If, yeah, like is Pluto a planet or not? In my heart, always. For, yeah, I'll never give it up. The Scorpio zodiac sign is the eighth sign of the zodiac. Scorpio people are intense, magnetic, erotic, challenging, secrety, secretive, powerful, broody, passionate, and immovable and penetrating. When is this? Oh, that's my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is Scorpio. I didn't know that. Their negative traits are jealous, demanding, and unreasonable. <laughs> it's Jeffree Star. Oh, God. She's the same as Jeffree Star. Mm-hmm. That's a little scary. No, my, I had a, one really bad experience with a Scorpio um, in high school. That one friend that I had who was very controlling mm-hmm. and, like, tried to keep the friends within the friend group only friends with her. And mm-hmm. we would hang out. But, like, we weren't supposed to hang out without her ever. Mm. Like, super controlling. Really it was weird. all about her. I would have never... I would have been like, bitch, I can't do this. She stopped me once. That's weird. This is the one that showed up at my workplace when oh, I stopped talking to her. Oh, my God. And, like, she lived in Florida at the time. And she drove to Savannah. Shut up. Because I, I used to check in on Facebook. And somehow she saw that I checked in here working. And she showed up. I've never checked in. I check in after I leave. I, it was a new feature. I was excited. I'm, I, <laughs> no, even when I saw that feature, I was like, Big Brother's watching. I don't need that shit. Even when I go to Mexico, I'm not going to post or do anything and talk or get back. I was like, Big Brother, is he cute? Is he and, interested? You're so <laughs> ridiculous. Come here. Come visit me. I'm over here, Big Brother. No. Sagittarius, this would be Casey Holmes. Mm-hmm. I love her. Um, Sagittarius are adventurous, hilarious, extrovert, romantic, spirited, unstoppable, generous, happy, and open-minded. They do not forgive easily. They are tack- they are tactless, vengeful, and pushy. Mm-hmm. Capricorn. Who's Capricorn? Capricorn. I don't know any Capricorns. I have a friend who's a Capricorn. Oh, Quad is a... You know, she's Sagittarius. I don't know what she is. Quad is a Sagittarius. I always confuse those two. Me too. Um, uh, let's see... Where am I? Okay. Capricorn people are organized, respectful, devoted, classy, materialistic, serious, staid, and, and ambitious and practical. Their negative traits are they have a defeatist attitude, puts blames on others, and are obstinate. And then Aquarius, arguably my favorite sign. I just like Aquarius people. Aquarius people are our original, idealistic, rebellious, independent inventors, open-minded, and honest. Their negative traits are they are unfaithful, cold, scattered, and emotionally unavailable, but they are compatible with a Gemini and a Libra. Unfaithful. That's so funny. That's hilarious, actually. Pisces! That's you, right? I'm an Aries, but I'm a Pisces Aries cusp. My children are Pisces. That's why. Okay. So the Pisces zodiac sign is the 12th sign of the zodiac, the last one. Pisceans are dreamy, erratic, creative, romantic, compassionate, elusive, imaginative, and sensitive people. Their negative traits are they can be too sensitive, they may have low self-esteem, can be greedy, and escapist by nature. So, like, honestly, I identify more as a Pisces than an Aries. I could see that. Um, And in the corrected one with the 13th sign, I am a Pisces. Mm. Um, So, I don't know what... Sh- I wonder if mine changes. It might. Because I, I feel like a Gemini. Um, But I, um, I'm also a cusp. 
So if you don't know what a cusp is, a cusp is when you're born within the week of transition between the signs. So you have sign qualities of both. Mm -hmm. So I am like, I have the most unique cusp and I'm not saying that to like toot my own horn, but because it's, it's the end and the beginning, because it's the last one and the first one coming back to close the circle. Mm -hmm. And so it's about like rebirth. So I'm like supposed to be very creative. It's, it's a steam sign, Mm -hmm. but like, I'm supposed to be like very creative, but also have the drive to be able to make it happen. Like Shaka Khan is one and she talks about it, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like. I identify with both, so I get both, but I also feel like I have both qualities. I don't think I'm a cusp, but I feel like I'm a Gemini. Gemini. I'm, I want to know what my Venus is, but we'll, we'll get there. Do you want to do a celebrity round really quick? Sure. Okay. Um, what's Madonna? She is a Leo. Okay. Um, Am I right? So, yeah, we we talked to about four celebrities before we did this. I'll get into harder ones, and then that you can use your cheat sheet. You predicted that Robin was a Pisces or a Cancer. Yeah. You were wrong. Is she uh, a Scorpio? Mm-mm. What is she? I, it shocked me. Oh. She's a Gemini. <gasps> Word! Yeah. I, th- I was like, Maybe oh Geminis God. are like meant to be in my life. Because huh. her music has changed my life for the better. Being a Gemini? Jessica has changed my life for the better. Tim has changed my life for the better. Like, Don't. Okay. Don't. Did, Don't. I was crying at work after that song talking to you about <laughs> I was crying. I feel like you're a cancer somewhere, though. I am. You are? My moon is a cancer. Okay. You have to tell me what that means. Okay. RuPaul? She's a Scorpio. And Brittany? She's a Sagittarius. Good job. So we're going to go into harder ones now. Okay. And you have your cheat sheet. I want you to use your cheat sheet because I know there's a lot of information to take in really quick. Um, No. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'll just do a few from each one because I have like a whole big list. Like, oh, wow. it's, just, it's a big, big list. They, this uh, your tango really broke it down. That's where I'm pulling my list from. I love my iPad so much. <laughs> okay, what do you think um, Emma Watson is? Hmm. An Aquarius. She's an Aries. Oh, word! Isn't that cool? Uh, let's see. What do you think Adele is? A Leo. So what are the strongest ones? A Leo and a... An Aries? No, I would or... say a Taurus. I feel a... like Tauruses have strong oh, Is she a Taurus? She's a Taurus. I can see that for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, let's see. I just said Leo because she always writes about herself. Yeah, it makes sense, too. Uh, we were talking about Angelina Jolie earlier. What do you think she is? Mm, a Gemini. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. job. Yeah. I was so excited when I saw that. I was like, I know I've liked her for a reason. <laughs> um, a couple other Geminis would be Nicole Kidman, Judy Garland. No, nothing about her. What? I've seen her in a movie. Oh, my God. I love and I know she has, like, a tragic life. But I, I like the old musicals. That's so fine. She did a lot of them. Uh, uh, Naomi Campbell is a Gemini. Oh, yes. I see that. Mm-hmm. She's Hardcore, right? She threw her cell phone at a housekeeper. So this was interesting to me Mm -hmm. because there were so many people once I saw this list that I was like, oh my God, everything fucking makes sense. So what is Ariana Grande? She's an Aries, right? Mm Mm-mm. We oh, just talked Taurus. about it. No, no, no. no. Like, she's hard on the outside, soft on the inside. Oh, she's a cancer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you told me that earlier. Duh. Listen to this list of cancers. Selena Gomez. Yep. Lily Pons. Don't know her. She's a YouTube. I know of her, but I don't know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Hanks. Oh, he's a cancer? Princess Di. Oh, word. Robin Williams. Oh. Vin Diesel. Delicious. Shocker. Ew. Meryl Streep. Work. Kathy Bates. Pamela Anderson, Jessica Simpson, and Lindsay Lohan. Oh, okay. They're all cancers. Um, do you know who Mila Kunis is? Mila Kunis. Do you know who she is? Yeah. Okay, her and Barack Obama have the same sign. What do you think it is? Mm-hmm. This is the big dick energy sign to me. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Um, this is hard. <sighs> it's is a it strong Libra? one. It's a strong Libras aren't strong. Well, I know, but their big trait is diplomatic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to tell you? Um, no. I feel like I know Barack Obama's birthday. I don't. I don't. When's his birthday? I don't know. Is it January fifth? 
No. Okay. That's that's like a combination of inauguration and <laughs> voter day. They're, yeah. They want to tell you. Is he? Is he? Is he a Scorpio? No. What but you're he? getting closer. Oh. A Leo? Yeah. He's a Leo? Yeah. Word. Him and Mila Kunis. Also Sandra Bullock, Daniel Radcliffe, and Jennifer Lopez. I love Sandra Bullock. Me too. I love J-Lo. Uh, what do you think Cameron Diaz is? This one made so much sense to me. Um, is she an Aquarius? Mm-mm. Because I get very, like, uh, cagey, I don't know, Mm-mm. from her. I don't have much of an opinion of her. I mean, okay, um, Tim Burton? Paul Walker and Warren Buffett all share. Pisces? Mm-mm. Virgo. Oh. Uh, let's see. I'm terrible at this. Y'all, sorry. Kim Kardashian. Uh, Leo? Uh-uh. Let's see. What would she be? She shares a sign with my husband. Oh, Libra. Isn't that weird? That is weird. I don't see that, but Will Smith is one, too. Well. <sighs> Kate Winslet I don't. I, I can see that for her, though, because... Diplomatic, she's working to free people. Mm-hmm. Partner and other oriented, so she's all about being in a relationship and her children mm-hmm. and whatever. Um, peaceful and fair and balanced, aesthetic, flirtatious, indecisive and gullible. That's all Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, I love my husband, but yeah. Okay, uh, this one, everything made sense about this person when I saw her sign because. I feel like you either love her or you hate her. Anne Hathaway. Mm. Anne Hathaway, Leo DiCaprio, Ryan Gosling, Julia Roberts, and Whoopi Goldberg all share this song. Hmm. What would what would be the most off putting sign for a white woman to have? A white woman. Uh, uh. Uh, to be public, to be like a celebrity. I don't know. Um, is that a, uh, I don't know. Scorpio. Oh, they're all Scorpios? All of them. And I was like, that's why people don't like Anne Hathaway. Oh, well, I, no, people don't like Anne Hathaway because the media made people not like Anne Hathaway. Yeah, but also the way I that she Anne speaks. Hathaway. Oh, I love her too. But the way that she speaks and she carries herself, it's just so self-assuring and like a little bit self-possessed. And people just don't like that on a white woman. Well, no, I I think the reason she got that backlash is because the media made a backlash happen against her because they overexposed her. There are people that then, hate her just because of her personality, though, because Roxy is one of them that has nothing to do with the media. I, there are people that see her and are, like, off-put by her. I love her. I but, love her, too. Um, but, no, like, I feel like the media had a hand in that, even if Roxy doesn't read it or whatever. Like, Maybe the media They overexposed did, her, but I don't portrayed think, her a certain way. I don't think it's and then the media. And then they start thinking, we're kind of tired of her. Let's kind of dog her now. People are like, yeah, I'm tired of her. She's just too perfect. She's just too this. I don't think it's just the media. But I think it had a huge impact on it. I mean, we can agree. Same agree. with, like, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence, they did the same thing, too. They did the same thing to Emma Stone. Um... They build up women and then they tear them down because they have too much exposure. People are tired of them and they want somebody new to bring along. It's a very common thing. They did it to Britney. But no one is talking negatively about Emma Stone. Yes, they are. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, absolutely Jennifer Lawrence. People fucking drag Jennifer Lawrence online. But I feel like that's also been... She's one of those people you either love or you hate her. She's gotten a lot of hate from the beginning. People are just like, her personality is so obnoxious. It has nothing to do with the media. They're just people that have, like, reactions. I guess. This one... Are you ready? No. Miley, Taylor, Swift, mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, Nicki Minaj, and Katie Holmes. I don't want to blow my burp in your face. And this is a sign we haven't done yet, right? That's correct. Uh, Let me know if you want. Pisces. A hint. Let me know if you want a hint. Oh, give me a hint. Give me, give me. Oh, Sagittarius. Yep. Yeah. Also, they're portrayed as goddesses when women are Sagittarius. It's... Oh. Okay. I thought um, they were like the horse thing. Like, like a... Yeah, but like the, the, the nature of the personality in a woman. This one's not that great to me. Jim Carrey, Tiger Woods, Mel Gibson, and Elvis Presley. I think Jim Carrey... Virgo? I... Mm-hmm. Weird day Virgo. Uh, this one was shocking. Like this one didn't make any sense to Aquarius? me. Aquarius? No, Capricorn. Oh, okay. 
I mean, ambitious, responsible, prudent, economical, efficient, disciplined. Do you feel like that's Elvis, Jim Carrey, Tiger Woods, and Mel Gibson, though? Like, I kind of disciplined, know. yes. Ambitious, yes. Um, insensitive, yes. Mm. Pessimistic, yes. Okay. Go Just on. listing off of these traits that you've provided me. Okay. So then we have two left. Oprah Winfrey. You've told me hers before. Have I? Mm-hmm. We've already done Virgo? Yes. You like talking about Virgo. I just feel like Virgos know it all, or they like to think they know it all, and I feel like Oprah gives that vibe. She's weird. She's weird? This, this sign Pisces. is known for weird people. Pisces mm-hmm. is known for weird people. No, Aquarius is known for weird people. That too. They like to talk. Aquarius. Aquarians love to talk. They do. That's, and that's when you're like, they love to talk. She's an Aquarian. Because I thought she was something else. I thought she was a Sagittarius. Okay, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, Daniel Craig, and Eva Mendez. Arguably the finest woman on earth. Um, That's the one we haven't done. I don't remember. I saved this one. There's 12. Virgo. We did Virgo. I'm done with this. Is it Virgo? It's Pisces. We did Virgo. We did Virgo already. I feel like there's 12. Oh my God. Scientifically, you could only remember seven things at once. And I'm done. (laughs) Oh no, I'm not. I can't close my iPad. I failed. You did not fail. I only got like two right. I mean, we barely know anything about it. Stop. (laughs) All right. We are not true, like, astrologians. All right. We'll be right back reading our neonatal intensive care unit charts. charts. And ray of lights. Yes. All right. And we're back. So, I think we're going to read my chart first. Okay. Um... So that you can kind of get an understanding of like what each area is. Yeah, and I feel like mine is not so bad. Well, also ours are different, of course. Like there are certain houses, I guess, that determine certain things, and I don't have things in certain houses, whereas you do, I think. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. So I have my sun sign, which is like your primary sign. Mm-hmm. Um, that is in Aries. What's the difference between moon and sun? Well, sun is your main sign. Okay, and moon is just uh, like well, it explains okay, it as okay. we go through. Sorry, it. sorry, go. Um, so the sun determines your ego, identity, and role in life. Okay, it is the core of who you are, and it is the sign you are most likely to already know. Your sun sign is Aries, meaning you are fundamentally assertive and persistent and courageous, naturally competitive and fiercely independent you push things forward with energy and enthusiasm and persevere through anything you need to learn to understand what other people or that other people are complex holes it is your ninth house meaning you feel the need to distinguish yourself from others through philosophy faith education and politics i feel like a lot of it fits me no yeah um also like seeing people as complex holes is something i because i'm very black and white and yeah so i need to see more shades of gray you know yes i do I have called you a zebra on more than one occasion. Oh my God. So next is my ascendant, which is in Leo. Okay. An ascendant is the mask you present to people. It can be seen in your personal style and how you come off to people when you first meet. This makes sense. Um, Some say it's because it becomes less relevant as you get older. It changes every two hours. So if it doesn't make sense, text your mom to confirm your birth time. Your ascendant is Leo, meaning you come off as bright, good natures and good natured and magnetic. Your energy makes you seem either like a know it all or a live wire, but always a sign of attention. I have said that you are, you are know-it-all. intimidating. So my No, mo- intimidating. Not Did a it say intimidating in there? No, but those characteristics can be intimidating in a person. Totally. So my moon is in cancer. Um, Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) The moon rules your emotions, moods, and feelings. This is likely the sign you think most of as yourself, yourself as, since it reflects your personality when you're alone and deeply comfortable. Your moon is in cancer, meaning your emotional self is sensitive, thoughtful, and empathetic. You have a tendency to feel like a martyr and secretly fear being abandoned by those you love. Oh you my often god! Have... <laughs> I'm so pissed right now. I don't want to read my. <laughs> you, that's what I said. Are you sure? <laughs> really personal. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, it's fine. Shit, it's fine. You're being attacked. It's you're dragging me right yourself. Are you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I said I want to go first so you can brace no, yourself. I am right now. Um, you <laughs> often feel. You often have trouble letting things go and feel like an emotional wreck. It's your 12th house, meaning you. 
you find security and safety through privacy, secrets, and introspection. And that's so true. I love my privacy. Mm-hmm. I love self-reflection. Mm-hmm. I um, I don't really... I'm not big on secrets as much as I am. I was. And I feel like I'm, I was about holding everything in because I was afraid of chasing right, people away. Right, but it says as you get older. Yeah, and it's true. Yeah. So my Mercury is in Aries, um, which is my ninth house. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mercury determines how you communicate, talk, think and process information. It also indicates how you learn. It's the mind's planet. Your Mercury is in Aries, meaning your in- your intellect is quick, independent, and patient, energetic, and direct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think fast and start 100%. conversations. <laughs> you think fast and start conversations with enthusiasm. Yes. You're likely to yell. It is in your ninth house, yes. meaning you are curious about and inclined to analyze what you believe in and what you how. What and how you learn, politics, philosophy, and your personal aesthetic or ethics. This is me. This is so you. It's wrong. <laughs> I told this is like, oh, are you I'm sure? Because I was like, you got into debates and you are, you get loud. I do. That is so funny. Oh, this is insane. Okay, keep going. My Venus is in Taurus. Um, Venus determines how and what you love. Okay. Indicates how you express affection and qualities you're attracted to. Your Venus is in Taurus, meaning your romantic side is oriented towards comfy and stability, or comfort and stability. Mm-hmm. Um, you move slowly and deliberately at the beginning of relationships. That timidity, timidity sometimes comes off as intimidating. You just want something sweet and simple. It is in your 10th house, meaning that for you, love is often expressed in goals, success, and responsibility. I wouldn't know. That's staring me. Is That's it? how I feel. Yeah, because you haven't been in a relationship since I've known you, so yeah. I haven't got to see that. Mars and Gemini. Ooh. Hit me. Mars is the planet of aggression. It <laughs> determines how you assert yourself, take action, and the energy that surrounds you, particularly in your sex life, your ambitious, and when you're angry. Uh, or your ambitiousness and when you're angry. Your Mars is in Gemini, meaning you assert yourself in a way that is quick and heady, and you push towards things with lots of energy, though sometimes without focus. That is so true. I'm all about big picture and not fine detail. Mm -hmm. Um, It is your 11th house, meaning you put a lot of energy into social status, including platonic and casual friends, Mm -hmm. along with your hopes, wishes, and dreams. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Jupiter is in Leo. Um, one of your two social planets, Jupiter rules idealism, optimism, and expansion. It's oh also God. very philosophical. Your Jupiter is in Leo, meaning you grow and find understanding through magnanimity. Magnanim- Magnanimous. Magnanimity. Magnan. That word is stupid. Keep going. <laughs> inspiring confidence, thinking big, yes. and feeling about feeling good about yourself. hundred percent. It is your 12th house, meaning you find success through privacy, secrets, and introspection. Um, but no, about like inspiring confidence. That's something I loved. I love helping people. 100%. You're my, you're like me in the sense that like, we just gas up our friends. Yeah. Like that's our thing. It's like you can do it. You're yeah. going to kill this. No, it's going to be sure. amazing. I'm that friend that will hype you up. Saturn is in Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Um, your other social planet Saturn rules, responsibility, restrictions, limits, boundaries, fears, and self-discipline. Okay. Your Saturn is in Aquarius, meaning you struggle with obstance, obstancity, obstancy, Missy? obstancy. I don't know what I mean. You struggle with obstinacy. Where am I? Right. Saturn Aquarius. Obstinacy? Obstinacy. Like being obstinate. obstinate. Yeah. Um, obstinacy? Obstinacy. Obstinacy. <laughs> We're we, British now. <laughs> obstinacy. I do say it now. A superior complete. No. A superiority complex and being overly detached. It is your sixth house, meaning you have... Had difficulties with your day-to-day routines, work, and bodily health. Mm. Uranus in Capricorn. I am very... Wow. That so, one was very accurate. Yeah. The I last a, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stability a, at work is an issue. I also feel like sometimes I have a superiority complex that I try to keep, like... Bottled in. Yeah. It's like, I don't... I'm, I believe like, you know what? No, I'm not better than anybody. You need to stop thinking But about sometimes it. you're like, I really am. Though. I fucking killed that. Yeah. Like, I'm amazing. Yeah. No, no, I do that too. <laughs> um, let's see... No! Uranus in Capricorn. Uranus stays in each sign for seven years, meaning it rules a generation more than a person. Mm -hmm. It rules innovation, rebellion, and progress. Your Uranus is in Capricorn, meaning other generations are shocked by your generation's sense of responsibility, seriousness, rationality, and hunger for power. It's in your sixth house, meaning for you, this manifests in rebelling against dated expectations about routines. Yes. Um, Neptune is in Capricorn. Neptune stays in each sign for about 14 years, meaning it rules a generation more than a person. Mm-hmm. It rules dreams, imaginations, and 
the unconscious. Your Neptune is in Capricorn, meaning your entire generation finds inspiration through hard work, responsibility, seriousness, and ambition. It is your sixth house, meaning that for you, if this manifests, manifests in your ideal, verging on unrealistic and impractical. Oh, beast. About, yeah, <laughs> about routines. <laughs> Pluto stays in each sign for up to 30 years, meaning it rules a generation more than a person. Mm -hmm. I love that Pluto. I have Pluto. But, well, I mean, everybody has Pluto, but mine's in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. uh, well, ours is in Scorpio, I guess, because I think it's going to be for you, too. Okay. It rules power, intensity, obsession, and control. Your Pluto is in Scorpio, meaning your generation's psyche is comparatively passionate, intense, serious, private, self-obsessed, and perceptive. Mm -hmm. This is your fourth house, meaning you personally are transforming outdated structures of the home and family. Mm-hmm. I'm gay. <laughs> I have a nuclear family, literally, but. Let's see. Are you ready? Mm. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Are you ready to get your ass? My booty hole is like two <laughs> sizes too small. She's making diamonds back there, y'all. Something's bound to happen. Okay. No, no, I'm ready. Hit me. I want to know all about myself because I feel like these are all things that like I have to admit that I know. Sun and Gemini. The sun determines your ego, identity, and role in life. That's it's a the core. Huge ego. It is the core of who you are, and it's a sign that you're most likely to already know. Your sun is a Gemini, meaning you are fundamentally dynamic, dynamic quick-witted, eclectic, and curious. Mm -hmm. Fascinated by everything, your childlike energy is often scattered in a million directions. Mm -hmm. On a social level, this may come off as gossipy or flaky. Mm -hmm. It's in your third house, meaning you feel the need to distinguish yourself from others through the things that you know and are familiar with. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's... Damn, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fucking accurate. Your ascendant is the mask you present to people. It is, it can be seen in your personal style and how you come off when people first meet you. Oh, um, okay. I'm ready. Some say it becomes less relevant as you get older. It changes every two years or two hours. So if it doesn't make sense, text your mom. Uh, your ascendant is an Aries, meaning you come across as independent, energetic, and direct. You seem to move quickly, sometimes with the appearance of more haste and impulsiveness than thought, patience, and follow through. Sometimes your forthrightness comes off as conceited or rude. Oh, a hundred percent. How many times have I said that people don't like, if that's what they see, yeah, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. I, I got room for nobody. <laughs> I'm bleeding through. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Okay. That's fair. Okay. Your moon. Um, the moon rules your emotion. Mm -hmm. Moons and feelings... Um, this is likely the sign that you most think of yourself as since it reflects your personality when you're alone and deeply comfortable. Mm -hmm. Your moon is in Leo, meaning your emotional self is dramatic, proud, expressive, idealistic, and somewhat self-centered. You need a lot of love and care and validation from other people. Mm -hmm. It is in your fifth house, meaning you find security and safety through romance, self-expression, creativity, and pleasure. And I know you don't like romance, but your romantic relationship does give you a lot of security. No, it really does. Yeah, yeah. And, like, romance defined by me. Like, what I consider to be romance. And then pleasure. <laughs> totally makes sense. I'm a very sexual person. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to read it. Like, I said, I liked how that one was. I didn't tell you your moon was in Leo at first. Okay. Okay. So, Mercury determines how you communicate, talk, think, and process information. Okay. It also indicates how you learn. It's the mind planet. Your Mercury is in Taurus, meaning your intellect is extremely practical and deliberate. You stick with ideas that make sense to you once you've thought them through. People like to hear what you think because of how practical you are. Though you may seem narrow-minded, sometimes other people have a difficult time understanding you. Mm. It is in your second house, meaning you are curious about and inclined to analyze what is valuable to you. The resources, in parentheses, talent, money, and self-worth you have, and the resources you want. Mm -hmm. All right. Venus determines how and what you love. Wait, did you tell me what it was? Yes, it was in Taurus. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So Venus determines... That's shocking. Is it? I mean, like, it makes sense. I just didn't picture Taurus being that. But okay. Oh, I know. Like, I was, like, seeing all, like, having something in Scorpio, I was like, <gasps> Yeah. But again, that's our generation thing. That's not. Yeah, that's not like you. That's just a generation. It's just, yeah. Us. Yeah, and I would say we are a pretty savage generation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so Venus determines how and what you love. It indicates how you express affection and the qualities you're attracted to. So excited about this. Your Venus is in Gemini, meaning your romantic side is dynamic, curious, and easily bored. Yep. You love witty banter, <laughs> yep. but you may have trouble deepening your relationships. You tend to be a bit timid and discreet with your crushes because you don't know how to be forthright. It is in your third house, meaning that for you, love is often expressed in the things you know and are familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. 
All right, you're Mars. Okay. Mars is the planet of aggression. It determines how you assert yourself, take action, so and the energy that surrounds you. This makes a lot of sense. I'm so nervous. Um, particularly in your sex life, your ambitiousness, and when you're angry. Mm -hmm. Your Mars is in... Whoa. Scorpio. Oh, that makes <laughs> so much sense. Okay. Meaning you assert yourself in a way that is serious and incisive, mm -hmm. and you push, for, push things forward with passion and intensity. Mm -hmm. Once you decide you want to do something you don't hold back it is your eighth house meaning you put a lot of energy into darkness taboos rebirth sex and transformation yeah mm -hmm. that is that's offensive that it knows me that well actually i feel so violated and you warned me no that's true that's very much me jupiter and capricorn one of the two social planets jupiter oh we have the same one um jupiter oh actually no we don't never mind jupiter Rules idealism, optimism, and expansion. Mm -hmm. It's also very philosophical. Your Jupiter is in Capricorn, meaning you grow and find understanding through responsibility, practicality, ambition, seriousness, efficiency, rationality, and power. Yeah. It is in your 10th house, meaning you find success through goals and responsibility. Absolutely. As I've gotten older, that's where I get the most satisfaction. Um, the other social platter... Saturn rules responsibility, restrictions, limits, boundaries, fears, and self-discipline. hit me. Your Saturn is in Scorpio, mm. meaning you struggle with passions, intensity, malicious intentions, obsessive thinking, and suspiciousness. Mm -hmm. This is your eighth house, meaning you have difficulties with darkness, taboos, rebirth, sex, and transformation. I have difficulties with it? I know. That. Didn't you just say you had good with that? Oh, you put a lot of energy into it. Didn't say you were good with it. I would agree with that. Um. So, yeah. Dif with darkness, taboos, rebirth, sex, and transformation. No, yeah, yeah. I can't argue with that one. I want to, but I can't. Um, Uranus stays in each sign for seven years, meaning it rules generations. These last one are the generational ones. Okay. Um, and I think we have the same one. No, we don't. Your Pluto's a different one. Okay. Um, so your Uranus is in Sagittarius, meaning other generations are shocked by your boundaries. Oh, yeah, actually, I didn't read the whole thing. I'm sorry. Uranus... Let's see. It rules innovation, rebellion, and progress. Uranus is in your Sagittarius, meaning other generations are shocked by your bound boundaries and generation uh, by the boundaries your generations are pushing along with your restless, restlessness and criticism. Mm -hmm. It is in your ninth house, meaning that for you, this manifests manifests in rebelling against dated expectations mm -hmm. about philosophy, faith, education, and politics. Mm -hmm. Um, Neptune stays in each sign for about 14 years, meaning it's a generational thing. Um, it rules dreams, imagination, and the unconscious. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Your Neptune is in Capricorn, meaning your entire generation finds inspiration through hard work, responsibility, seriousness, and ambition. It is in your ninth house, meaning that for you, that manifests in your ideal, verging on unrealistic and impractical, about philosophy, faith, education, politics. Mm -hmm. Ours and is the same? Um, no. Okay. Mine, I don't, let me check really quick. Yeah. I don't think it was. I oh, know it was, it was. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, but no, but mine is in a different house. Okay. Mine is in my sixth house, which means mine manifests as rebelling against dated expectations. Whereas yours is about, um, yours is in your ninth house, which is about rebelling against, um, uh, mine was in routines. Yours is in philosophy, faith, education, and politics. Yeah, it makes sense. Neptune um, stays in each sign for about 14 years, meaning... Uh, wait, actually, that's the one we just did. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Go Pluto. Ahead. This is the last one. Pluto stays in each sign for 30 years, meaning it rules a generation more than a person. It rules power, intensity, obsession, and control. Your Pluto is in Libra, meaning your generation psyche is comparatively indecisive, superficial, and people-pleasing. It is in your seventh house, meaning you personally are, tr are transforming outdated forms of close relationships and long-term partnerships. Mm. I don't know if that one fits, but... Yeah. yeah, I can see it fitting. Like, I don't want to hear it, but yeah. Um, so what did you think? I would like you to send that to me. I just did? Okay. I'm <laughs> going to read it later again. Um, I just got it. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a, like, wow, I think everyone should do that at least once. See, I'm glad I went first, though, so you could prepare, because I told you. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, are you sure? Because when, when she first said, oh, will you do our natal charts and read it to us? And I was like, sure. I and didn't then, like, know that I would feel this way. <laughs> and then I did it, and I was like, I feel very attacked. And I was like, are you sure <laughs> you want it? It's very personal. And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. Read it. Put it no, out no, there. No, like, I don't care that it's out there. Just like, but I was just wow. like, oh, I don't need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fucking accurate. Accurate, and so I was just like, well, okay. You know, Kathleen and Kendall Ray on YouTube both say that, like, sun signs 
like are good, but like shit doesn't make sense until you start reading your chart. And yeah. when you read your chart, then it makes more sense. And I, like, I would have to say there are things about being a Gemini that I do ad- identify with. And there are things that I don't, but like, if that's what Zodiac is saying about mama, Zodiac got it right. <laughs> I wonder if this is different, you know, like you said, it's different than the thing you read in the newspaper. Like this is like, no, I don't think the ones in the, in the newspaper, your horoscope. Yeah. Your like, horoscope. This is, this is different. This is like about your, you as a person. Yeah. 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 Going to drag your ass. Like I don't know that you can use astrology to predict what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Maybe on a bigger scale, but not on like day to day. I don't know. I don't think so either. I think it's like, oh, well. It's a gimmick. Yeah. Or like, this is happening, so that's why you're feeling this way. Right. Like, really? Can I just feel this way? That's why I'm mad because I stubbed my toe? Yeah. Because... I stubbed my toe because my Venus is in Mercury and my Capricorn is rising. Exactly. I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that makes sense, but... You want to hit me with a ray of light? Uh, you go first. Okay. <laughs> my family got a VR. And my daughter... Virtual reality. That's yeah, that. Oculus Quest 2. Uh-huh. Um, but... Like, I love it. I genuinely enjoy it. It does help relax me. I like it a lot. But my daughter had the most delayed emotional reaction to it because we pulled it out and she started jumping up and down. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, can I use it? I want to use it. She was so excited that then when she got a chance to calm down because her brother was using it, she just started like sobbing. I was like, what's wrong? Your turn is next. It's going to be okay. She's like, I'm just so happy. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> precious and it made my whole i was like i'm a good mom i got to try it when i got here and she woke up and came out while i was doing it so um i was asking her about it and she is still just over the moon about it she's like she's like i couldn't stand for a minute i was so excited she's my my tech kid like she loves technology and like she's really into video games and Mm -hmm. She will be the kid that's like, Mom, the new iPhone has this whatever, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, oh, great, babe. And they'll be like, oh, all it does is this. She, But she'll be really into it. She likes technology. I'm actually thinking about signing her up for a coding class. They have oh. kids coding classes. You know they have them um, on the iPad. I, I think I'm going to send her to the one at Columbus State, though. Okay. But um, they she can create like her own video game. That's cool. So I think, And I think she'd be really into it. She loves science and technology. So I think I'm going to sign her up and see how she does. Work. Yeah. I hope she enjoys that. Me too. My turn? Uh, I got to see my best friend try on wedding dresses because she's getting married in September. But it was very, very bittersweet for me. And I ended up crying like while on the Zoom with her family. And Sheena was like, oh my God, Jessica, are you crying? And then of course I turned the phone away because I was like, everybody's staring at me now. Thank you for calling me out, Sheenies. (laughs) Um, And then I kind of like composed myself and then when... I got off the phone, like, I immediately just kind of, like, broke down. Because, like, it's the first time that, like, I've been really mad about COVID. Pandemic, like, yeah. staying in my house, pff, fine. But, you know, not being there for her trying on wedding dresses is, is, like, very, very difficult for me. It just kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Because we've been talking about this for, like, ten years. Yeah. So, it sucked. But it was, I, like, I'm grateful for the technology that allowed me to still see her trying on. Yeah, it. so that's my ray of light, and I'm sticking to it. Work. Anymore? And the VR has porn. <laughs> That's the only reason I agreed to it. That is the only reason I agreed to it. Is. That's how I got them. <laughs> have you done it yet? Yes. How is it? It's great. Work. It's really weird to be from the male point of view, though. Because, like, from the male point of view, like, isn't it like your dick is going into somebody? <gasps> yeah, so I don't like the male point of view. It's like, I told Dan, I was like, I'm into whatever. Like, male, female, it doesn't matter. But, like, I am a female. I identify as a female. So, like, I need a female point Work, of view. Work, but, like, could he, like, be getting a blowjob from somebody, but you're giving the blowjob, but he yeah, sees it. Yeah, I found one like that, yeah, yeah. <gasps> that's so, so it was cool. a female perspective where it was going on now, yeah. Oh, word. Yeah. That's interesting. It's really fun. I touched that. I'm just really kidding. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, it didn't happen in here. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in there? Absolutely. Oh, my <laughs> the kids. Oh, you didn't have them? No. Oh, work. I have a 60-inch TV. I casted that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> work work it's a lot of fun i'm glad you I'm did do it. it again yeah no absolutely that's like that's a very unique and cool I way to spice up the bedroom love it and I you put a lot of energy much. into that i do okay sorry that yeah but i'm done it's my ray of lights okay work now my ray of lights um it was my best friend chris's birthday so we played so my favorite game of all times and it's his one of his favorites but it's the reason we became friends it's dark souls and um 
I actually, for his birthday last year, I bought him it for the Switch, because he only had it for, like, the PC and, like, Xbox, but he sold his Xbox. Oh, I remember that. But, um, but, like, I bought it for us to play, and we only played it a couple times together, but we actually started another game together, um, to play through, and we ended up playing until almost 11 (laughs) on a weeknight. Um, it was, like, like, the night before his birthday, um, and, like, we just really got into it and had a great time, and we learned, like, he learned, like, this way to cheat in the game, but, like... Oh, yeah, you told me about this. The yeah, thing yeah. with cheating is, like, I... We both put hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game, so it's not like we're missing out on the experience. We know the experience, we love the experience, just, and now we want a new experience with the, something we love. Yeah. And so, like, it's a way to, like, get, like, an insane amount of souls, like, very quickly, um, which is, like, how you level up and buy shit and everything. And so... Um, we did that and it was a great time. And then the next day was his birthday. And so I got up early and I went to Dunkin' Donuts and got his coffee and a breakfast and I got him a card and wrote a nice message and I know he liked it and I gave him money and <laughs> whatever. Like it was a good, it was a good time. I, I felt good about it. You felt like you contributed to his birthday. Yeah. And then also yeah. like I'm working on not being a jealous friend. Like I feel like it's something I'm, because of my fear of abandonment. Like, whenever my friends hang out with other people, I'm like, oh, no, they're going to leave me or they're going to forget me or whatever. I can be a jealous friend. And so now I'm trying to be like, no, they're his friends too. They've been friends just as long or more or whatever. I I have those conversations I have those conversations constantly. And it's like... It helps me not act, but it doesn't take away the feelings. I'm actually, like, a pretty jealous wife too. Oh. Yeah. Like, I get real possessive. And I, and that's something I'm afraid of. Cause like when it's time for me to be ready to be in a relationship again, like I, I feel so secure that I know that I have no reason to be jealous. Uh huh. And so it just kind of manifests sexually now. Interest. Like manifest, like you're jealous sexually or like, or um, energy. Like on I, your... we, we had a conversation about this, that like having an open relationship is not a possibility. Oh yeah. Like ever. Same. And he, and he was like, well, you know, if you really wanted to, as long as you were honest, I'd be okay. I'd be like, uh, no, it's not going to happen. And he's like, well, I didn't say that you had to let me just because I let you. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> it's like, I am a jealous bitch. And, but I'm also super, super loyal. So Same. it's like mine. And then I'd also feel really guilty. Cause I'd feel like I'd be stepping outside of a relationship, even with, even with consent or whatever. I don't want that. I, I got want married. You. If I didn't, if I wanted to have a relationship that wasn't a big commitment, we would have just lived in sin for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Like, so no, it's yeah. a new thing. So like, yeah, like girls flirt with Daniel. And like, there was a girl that flirted with him at Chick-fil-A, like right in front of me. And like, we just looked at each other when she was looking at us and we just started laughing because it happens all the time. People find Daniel so attractive. Uh-huh. And so we laugh. So like, I don't get jealous like that anymore, but like, yeah, sexually I'm pretty jealous. Like that shit is fine. I've even told him, it's like, if we were to ever have a threesome, fine with it. But like, no one can suck your dick. <laughs> That's mine. And he was like, but what if I want that? I was like, Mm-mm, that belongs to me. <laughs> like, no. I was like, I can't promise. I was like, maybe I can like let it tr- try. It's like, but I can't promise I won't kick whoever it is off <laughs> If you look like you enjoy it too much, like that's mine. <laughs> like she can sit on your face, she can ride it, but she can't put her mouth on it. What? And he was like, "Why?" And I was like, "I don't know. It's fine. I don't know. That belongs to me." Now that's something like I've had conversations with friends about, and like who have friends who have like swung or like yeah brought other people in just to try it out or whatever, mm-hmm. and like the jealousy that's involved. And acknowledging it and being open about that jealousy. Mm -hmm. And I just would not want to introduce that jealousy into my relationship ever. Like, Um, you know, I think it's a matter of like having clear boundaries mm -hmm. and knowing what's okay and what's not okay. And I think if a boundary is crossed, then that can, that's where like the relationship could fall apart afterwards. Like I'm open to whatever, like threesomes are fine. You know, I don't care. But like, you have to be like really careful and Mm -hmm. solid I just, I don't know. It's hard to imagine, I think, because you haven't experienced, like, a solid relationship like that. And I think Maybe. once you do, like, you'll find the balance of, like, a non-traditional sex life within those bounds. Like, whatever that means for you. It may not be an open relationship or it may not be a threesome. It could be, like, sex in public order. But, like, you'll find that boundary that you feel comfortable with that you never thought you would. Because with my jealousy, I didn't think a threesome was possible. But it is. Mm-hmm. It's just the open Gross. relationship. Yeah, I, I don't know. And maybe, maybe I'll change, but I kind of don't want, like, I like the idea of what I want. Monogamy is hard. I bet. Yeah. Monogamy is, humans were not made to be monogamous, Mm -hmm. you know? So 
like, I understand what you're saying, because I think I have felt like you before, but also, I'm on a 15-year relationship. Yeah. That is, I guess, what makes it work. Yeah, you have to find, like, what makes it fun and new. Like, right now, like, we're good with just us and the VR and mm-hmm. lots of toys and outfits. But, you know, if we ever got to that point, like, and also, we just talk about it a lot, too. Like, I think talking about it a lot really helps, too. You'll get there. I hope. I don't know. I don't know if I want to get <laughs> You know, if you want to be in a relationship? No, I'd like to be in a relationship, but I don't know if I ever want to get to the point where I feel like I need to bring somebody in to make my relationship. It doesn't feel like um, your relationship. It just feels like a new sex thing. I think there's a point in a relationship where sex really is just sex. Mm-hmm. Like, it is. there can be intimate sex, and then there's just sex as a human, right? And I think that happens in every mature relationship. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you want to experience something new, but you don't necessarily want to leave the relationship to do it. I don't, I mean, I don't think everybody can do it. I don't think it's for everybody. Because, like, right now in the gay community, everybody's in an open relationship. I, yeah, I don't get that. I, I don't, don't understand get that. it. Like, you get married and you're open, and it's like, then why get married? What's the point? Do you just want that paper because you couldn't have it for so long? Then, okay, I can understand that. But, like, I also. I just, I don't know. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I can do that. But also, I'd have to see who I am in that relationship and how I approach it. I just think that that would make more, for people like us, there's more insecurities that come with that. And I feel like it would introduce more insecurities. It would make my life, my internal life more unhappy. And then by having all those fears. You will shut down. Yeah. You'll be done. Yeah. You'll back out. So I just, for me, emotionally, I don't know if I can handle it, at least right now. No, no. I don't think it's something that you can walk into a relationship expecting. I'm just saying, like, if it does come up, like, so many years in, it's completely natural to talk about it and just be like, these are my boundaries. Uh-huh. I'm not saying you're going to... I'm not saying walk into a relationship expecting that one day you're going to have a threesome or an open relationship. I'm just saying that, like, your partner is going to feel comfortable enough to bring it up and you have to be able to listen to it, not take it personally, digest it, and then be like, okay, but and this so that's is That's the I'm hard part. It is hard. It's very hard, especially for somebody like me. Yeah. I take everything personally. Same. And Shit like, that I shouldn't even take personally. Like I'm not good enough. Like, I would go yeah. there. I know I would go there. Like, I'm not satisfying him or whatever. Like, yeah, but I don't have those feelings, so I think it's possible for you not to have those feelings. I hope so. Yeah. But also... Also, if it's I not, know, That's if like it's a big not, fear of mine. Also, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Mm-hmm. You know? There's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, I'm old. I'm bored. Maybe you'll be in a throuple. Oh, I would never want that. Oh my god, I dream about it. No. I wish Daniel had another wife. I wish that we all lived together. I could not. Genuinely, I do. But then she would suck his dick too. I feel like I would be in a relationship with her. Oh, well then maybe for you it would work. Yeah. But I could never, like... I would love another woman in the house to just kind of, like, help me get through my day-to-day. There's so, just hire a maid, girl. Yeah, no, I've thought about it. <laughs> you don't have to introduce a whole other person to your relationship. I've thought about hiring a nanny maid combo. Do it. I, Mary I, Poppins. When I get enough money, I probably will. I told Daniel, it's one of the first things that I will do. It's just... I lost my thought. You were saying... Oh, a throuple. No, I could never be in a throuple. There's too much communication needed. Like, too so much. I would love to communicate. Huh? You'd love to communicate. Not all the time. Um, I don't want to have to constantly be communicating to make sure everything is... Like, I'm so stressed out about making sure you don't hate me right now or that I'm not crossing a boundary. Having to do that with two people who I'm romantically involved with is too the fuck much. I can barely handle a normal friendship without completely falling apart thinking, oh my god, I'm fucking everything up. But, Mario, I think that you're basing that off of, like, who you are now. Right. And right now, I would never want to be in a couple. Yeah. I and I don't fair. think I would... I, I'm not I think you're becoming more and more self-actualized, and some of these things are going to quiet, and they're not going to be as strong, and you're going to be able to distinguish, like, the negative thought patterns more and be able to make proper decisions based on what's actually in front of you instead of what what do you think the idea of what's is in front of you but like that comes with time and maturity and stability like without those things i don't think you could ever even get there so mm-hmm. until you find a relationship stable enough to even have those conversations like it's not you shouldn't even be worried about it yeah i guess i, I worry about it though. but it's just like i like i wouldn't i would not it has no desire if i were you i would i wouldn't even worry about it because i would be like oh i'm in a relationship with this man now and like the second he brings up like an open relationship i would laugh in his face and walk away like oh this nah like i don't even think i would like i could not even entertain it that's why i wouldn't worry about it i couldn't entertain it either yeah so don't worry about it but also like i think i need to be very upfront with somebody and be like look 
if you're looking for this, I'm not that person. Well, I think it should be more of like... I'm not really interested in open relationships. So, you know, if that's... Like, if starting that's off, it's a hard no. Like, it is an absolute hard no. I know, but calm down and fix your face. You know, it doesn't have to be aggressive. It could just be like, no, that's not for me. I'm so sorry. But well, thank no. you for coming. Yeah, no, like, I have to be, like... No, I'm saying it's... I have to express that up front if I'm going to start talking to somebody. Yes, you do. But you don't have to express it so defensively is all I'm saying. Because oh. there's nothing wrong with having an open relationship. Right. It's just, it's not for me. And right. I need to be very clear. This is not for me. Okay. So if you're going into this, expecting that one day we're going to get here, we're never getting there. Right. But all I'm saying is <laughs> this is a simple, oh no, thank you. That's not for me. Thanks for coming to coffee. Like, okay. I feel like that's all it needs to be. And it can be. And I'm sure in that moment I could probably do that. But yeah. like, I'm telling you right now, no, no, I, I'm, it's not I, happening. I'm, I'm like, I'm so sorry I brought it up. We will not have an open relationship, Mario. I'm so sorry. What? Chris always sends me the weirdest shit. Oh. Baby in Iraq, first ever human documented with three penises. Hmm? Hmm? Let's see if there's a picture. I mean, it's a baby penis. Is I don't it know real? If really... I don't know. Is it photoshopped? I don't know. I've seen guys with two penises before. Really? Mm-hmm. You've never seen that? No. I'll have to show you. Let's see. <sighs> I love you, but we have to wrap this we up. We do, we do, we do. It's actually a really short episode, too. Mm-hmm. Only because... Mm, An hour and a half. About it. You've already talked about it once, girl. Oh, it's only because we had to re-record. We've been here 45 minutes longer than that. Yeah. Uh, oh, two of them were removed. No. Oh. That sucks. I don't know. I don't know if I would want three penises, but... Diaphalic. I think it'd be fun. Two? Maybe two. I don't know that you need three. Um, <laughs> it brings a whole new meaning to one in the pink tune sink. Oh my god! <laughs> Man with two penises. So there's been like two guys recently who went on Reddit separately, and are like, "I have two penises. Ask me anything." <sighs> and they show it. I'm trying to find the pictures. I love Reddit. Um, where is? He used to come up right away. His name's like Diphalic Dude. <laughs> and like I think one's circumcised, one's uncircumcised. Can I see the can I see the circumcised one? Yeah, they're right next to each other. Oh, I'm the guy with two penises. Ask me anything. Here's his anime. That was seven years ago. Wow, shit. Mm. What the fuck, Reddit. Okay, we have to end this one. Okay. Huh. Double dick dude on red. Let's see if he has other pictures. Interesting. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's quite the note to end <laughs> Look up double dick dude on Reddit if you want to see a guy with two penises. That's a very interesting episode. Um, but. <laughs> ADD, zodiac signs, double dick penises, open relationships. Did you have any more ray of light? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. It's cool. It's a light week. It is a light week. I'm going to have therapy tomorrow. You, what? And we don't have therapy tomorrow. Cut it um, But yeah, thank you so much for listening to I Am Very Passionate. Uh, uh, please like, rate, and read us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, all that jazz. We're on there sometimes, eventually. We're there. <laughs> Email us if you have anything that you want to say. Add about astrology, about double dicks. Yeah, if you have a picture, send it to me. I'd love to see it. I oh promise God. to keep you anonymous and not show it to anybody. <laughs> I just would like to see... Like, off of a Reddit user. You know what? Flood my inbox with your dicks. Oh, my <laughs> <It's> God. <fine. laughs> I am very passionate podcast at gmail.com. Now accepting dick pics. Oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, but <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time. I'm Mario. Pew, pew, pew. And that's Jessica making the fake gun noises. I am. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Okay. Right now. Bye. Bye.